afternoon, everyone. As time is short and I'm what stands between you and your lunch, I think it's best that we get going now. Um, once again, Nikos and Olga have got together a completely stellar panel here to talk about what has been a very exciting sector for Greece this year, the energy sector. Um, if I talk about the different sectors of energy that we've seen a lot of activity in, I'll start with electricity, renewables very much back in the limelight for 2018, um, significant projects have been completed, uh, 282 megawatts of wind, for example, was installed in 2017, we're expecting at least 300 megawatts this year, and next year, um, probably twice that amount. Uh, the auctions for supported energy uh, contracts, power purchase agreements for wind and PV have started as part of the EU move to the market model. Uh, 277 megawatt of PV and wind were auctioned in July of this year, and today, the 10th of December, a further 312 megawatt of uh, wind and PV were auctioned. So we're looking at a lot of projects that are going to need to be financed and built in the course of the next 18 months. Uh, I think the news from today is that prices dropped significantly. Uh, whilst this may not seem immediately good for developers looking to uh, invest in wind and PV in the market, we should remember that Greece is an extremely sunny country and an extremely windy one. And the prices still come out at greater than those prices paid in Germany, for example, which has less sun and indeed less wind. Uh, new markets for the trading of electricity have been established in order to uh, move completely to the EU markets model leading to an expectation that in the course of next year we will be moving to private power purchase agreements and indeed I'll be interested to hear particular PPC's view on the moves to the first non-subsidised renewables projects. Uh, the concern that investors had historically about renewables, which was the large deficit in the special account that pays subsidized uh, electricity prices to renewables generators, has been largely dealt with by um, the redu reduction in the, in the prices paid to sub uh, subsidized producers, and the payment delays have now been uh, substantially uh, extinguished. Uh, we certainly at Watson, Farley and Williams in the Athens office are seeing a great deal of international investor uh, interest in the renewables project, particularly for larger projects. And I think we're going to see a, a move from small projects being rolled out on a separate basis to much larger portfolio projects. If I turn to the oil and gas, um, we've got... A fantastic story that uh, Energian has got to tell this year, but I won't uh, steal Matthias's thunder and I'll let him tell it. Um, we've got uh, the gas trade project is also preceding the floating regasification unit in Alexandroupolis. It's uh, expected to be ready by end of 2020. The TAP project is nearly completed. Uh, and uh, Thesfa, the Thesfa in finalization, the completion of the Thesfa privatization is going to take place probably next week or the week after. Hydrocarbon exploratory works have also started across Western Greece, and I'll be very interested to hear both Energy and, and uh, uh, Hellenic Petroleum about that, how that's getting on. So we have a great deal to discuss today. So I'll start with my panel members. Perhaps I'll start, seems to be the, uh, the way we'll start with the person closest to me. Um, that's Arnaud Jossien from uh, BNP Paribas. He's the Managing Director of Corporate Finance EMEA with well over a decade in Greek transactions and recently declared BNP Paribas to be the uh, um, Market Advisor of the Year for this sector. So 
the discussion is always in relation to energy, that, that Greece has the ability to become the, the energy hub for, for, the, for the market. How realistic is that, and what has to be done to make it realistic? Um, yeah, can, does that work? Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, you're right that it is something we have heard many times, by, um, including in this forum in the last few years, and because of the exceptional geographical location of Greece, that Greece is, uh, is bound to be uh, an energy hub. At the same time, um, at the same time, it has not really, I mean, be effective in so much in the last few years. So, what is different today? Um, I, I would say that, uh, as you just mentioned. There are a large number of uh, sizable projects which are ongoing today, which are either on the way to completion or uh, are well advanced and approved, which is, uh, makes a difference with the previous years. Uh, you mentioned TAP, which has already uh, half completed or mm -hmm. at least. Uh, there is also the connection with, uh, with Bulgaria, Greece-Bulgaria. IGB. I exactly, IGB in the, in the gas sector. Um, the NLG projects now, I mean, are, 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 have made a huge progress in the north, northern part of, uh, of Greece, uh, as you mentioned. But also in electricity, the connection of the islands uh, has, has also made major steps compared to a few years ago, and there is more, more investments to come. But even if we look at what's happening inside, I mean, Greece, not talking about the large international projects, uh, but we are seeing now reforms, companies being sold, uh, you mentioned uh, Desfa, uh, the market is opening, there is a liberalization of, um, of electricity and uh, the wholesale and retail sectors are going to be, uh, I mean, competition is, is going to be open. Um, we see a lot of uh, willingness and efforts by, by the government to, to, to to complete the objective in terms of renewable part of um, um, with, with big investments uh, to come. So all of that makes, uh, I would say, a, a different environment that uh, even one year or two years ago, when we see concrete projects ongoing and uh, with a lot of these projects supposed to be completed in the next couple of years. So... No, the Revithusa extension has just completed. Sorry? The Revistosa, the gas storage project. Yes, exactly. It's just been announced, yes. Okay. Yeah. okay, thank you. Okay, Mathieu. This is Mathios, uh, CEO of Energian. Uh, you've had a fantastic year. Tell us about it and tell us how you did it. Well, thank you. I think, um, and thank you for your kind words. It has been a great year, but I think it has been a great story coming out of Greece. Uh, it's a story that started back in 2007 when uh, I started the business and bought the only producing asset in the country, a field called Prinos. And back then we paid 1 million euro to buy the only production. It was a difficult situation back then. Uh, somebody had announced that he found a billion barrels after drilling a dry hole, a big scandal. Uh, and that has turned into what is today a comedy that floated on the London Stock Exchange in March. We completed the only IPO of the year of uh, the ENP sector and the first IPO since five years in this, uh, in this space. And uh, we did that on the back of a success story in Greece where production has grown. We are still the only oil and gas production of the country. And on the back of a big Israeli project where we are uh, developing a $1.6 billion um, asset offshore in Israel and uh, complete our IPO, as I said earlier, and uh, despite the volatility of the oil price and despite what has happened in this market, uh, we have performed uh, relatively uh, much better than, uh, than the market. How did it happen? I think it's a proof that you can get uh, a lot of value out of Greek projects. You can get a lot of value out of investing in a country. And I've said it many times in the, in the last 10 years, I've dealt with seven prime ministers and 12 ministers of energy in this country. And uh, we've had some fantastic ups and downs, and some of them with Virginia uh, and Watson Farley as our lawyer. Uh, we faced situations where ministers were saying that they don't want oil and gas in the country. We faced ministers that wanted oil and gas in the country. The most recent one announced that uh, he's against oil and gas, hydrocarbons, and, and is in, in favor of protest. But despite that, things are happening, and together, Hellenic Petroleum and uh, major companies are in, in the country today. So. The message is that in energy, in Greece, you can find a lot of value, uh, provided that you're able to work within the parameters of, uh, of the country. Financing is a major issue, and uh, 
Benpe Paribas talked about major projects uh, that still haven't happened. And one of the major concerns is where is the financing going to come from? In 2015, um, we had the support of EBRD to be able to fund our projects in Greece. And that was because the Greek banks could not support major infrastructure projects in Greece. International banks were totally closed for the country. And uh, all these projects to make Greece an energy hub, and I can tell you each one of the seven prime ministers and 12 ministers of energy has said exactly the same thing. Greece needs to become an energy hub. Well, to become an energy hub, you need a lot of capital. Because projects that we're talking about for the last 10 years still haven't uh, become a reality. And that needs equity and debt. And that is what everybody needs to think about. This is nice to draw maps on uh, lines on maps of projects that uh, I'm sure we'll talk about later. Uh, but we need to talk about reality and things that will happen today. So uh, it's been a great year for us, and uh, we look forward to a better year uh, next year with the volatility on uh, the gas market being developed in the country. As far as Western Greece is concerned, which you mentioned, uh, we are exploring Western Greece. It's a play that hasn't yet been proven. Uh, we have the partnership with Repsol. Other major companies have come to the country. I think there are a lot of opportunities in the upstream sector, uh, but those are still in the exploration stage, so it needs a special uh, investor because public markets are not ready for uh, exploration risk at the moment. Uh, public markets, and I lived through this in the roadshow that we did this year, want the exploration upside, but they don't want to pay for it. Uh, and that's how they view uh, exploration. And that's, so that means that for Greece, this means a lot of equity investments to drill wells, which is the only way we will ever find out if we have uh, anything in the country. Thank you, Matthias. Um, George Alexopoulos is, is next on, the, on, our, on our panel. He's the uh, executive member of the board and general manager of strategic planning and joint ventures at Hellenic Petroleum, um, where you have from exploration, but a far broader range of business at Hellenic Petroleum. Uh, you've had a good year as well as I understand it, and um, in, in, a, in a difficult mar market, w w what would you say are the major challenges facing oil and energy companies in Europe? And how, is, how are you responding as a company? Thank you, Virginia. Uh, indeed, we had uh, a very good year. We had uh, a record profitability of 834 million uh, euro uh, EBDA uh, in uh, 2017, and we're actually pretty optimistic about this uh, year as well. Uh, what you said is very accurate. Energy companies in Europe are indeed facing a number of major uh, challenges, so we shouldn't let this uh, profitability uh, forget, uh, have a, make us forget that. Uh, what are these challenges? Well, uh, stagnant or, or even declining uh, demand, the need for ever cleaner uh, products. Uh, let's not forget competition for low compliance cost countries. Uh, just to give you an idea what this means, the compliance cost gap for European refiners f re regarding regulatory cost alone is approximately $1.5 per barrel. Now, if you add to that uh, labor costs and energy costs, that number can grow up to $4 uh, per barrel. So you have to be extremely competitive in order to uh, survive in Europe. And of course, let's not forget, above all, the transition to a low-carbon economy. It's going to take several decades, but it's there, it's coming, and all energy companies need to prepare for that. So how do we respond? Uh, we have completed a major upgrade uh, program focusing on our uh, refineries, but also investing in uh, marketing networks and power generation, and at the same time, we have implemented performance improvement programs which gave us an annual contribution in excess of 400 uh, million euros. So these are some of the reasons why we had uh, a very strong year uh, last year. We expect to have one uh, this year. 
Uh, so we believe we're up to the challenge. Now, going forward, we are leveraging our highly complex and highly integrated refinery network and our privileged location to become a major exporter of high quality uh, clean products. We're continually optimizing uh, our refineries uh, regarding crude oil feedstock, but also uh, refining uh, operations. We are relentlessly pursuing uh, digital and uh, transformation and energy efficiency opportunities. We are uh, investing in hydrocarbon exploration in Greece together with our international partners. And there, we are very happy to uh, report uh, significant progress. We are now uh, in uh, five uh, leases in onshore and offshore Western Greece, and also in the North Aegean, uh, together with our international partners, uh, great companies such as Total, uh, ExxonMobil, Repsol, uh, and reputable energy companies from Europe, such as Edison. Uh, we expect another five applications to turn into leases uh, shortly, uh, and we look to the future of exploration in Greece uh, with optimism, much uh, like uh, Matthias mentioned uh, uh, before. Uh, we are also expanding our international marketing networks, and at the same time, we're investing in our renewables business. And last but not least, we look to the future and invest in alternative uh, technologies in energy uh, and mobility. Thank you. Um, next up, Alexander Cornida, CFO of PPC. Um, now, PPC has announced this year that it was planning to, to merge its renewables subsidiary, PPC Renewables, into the main company. Is, is this an indication of the way PPC is moving and how it's viewing its energy mix? Uh, thank you, Virginia. Well, PPC is uh, the largest uh, vertically integrated electricity company in our country. It has uh, 12 gigawatts, gigawatts of installed capacity. We are uh, responsible for more than 50% of the electricity generated in the country. But if we exclude large hydros, we have about three gigawatts of large hydros. Our share in the renewable sector in Greece is very small. It's only 3% currently. So investments in renewables represent now the cornerstone of our strategic plan for the next uh, 10 years. Uh, we believe that uh, uh, wind and solar especially will be the most competitive technologies for new builds going forward. They will continue to, to uh, offer significant growth opportunities and attractive returns, despite uh, what you mentioned at the beginning, that prices are down in the, in the, with respect to feed-in premiums, but costs are also very much down, so returns are there. Uh, our target is to develop uh, approximately two gigawatts of renewables capacity by 2030, of which 600 megawatts over the next uh, five years. To achieve this, we need to invest um, something in the order of 700 million euros until 2022 and uh, capture more than 20% of the uh, new capacity to be added uh, in the system. Uh, if we do this, our share will grow from a current level of 3% to 10% uh, by 2022. We understand that this is a very ambitious target. It is in line with the ambitious targets set in the National Energy Plan that was recently released. Uh, and because we, we need to make sure that we achieve it, we decided to proceed with uh, merging our renewable subsidiary uh, we want to have all necessary resources available. Uh, we need to have uh, the expertise that we have in the parent company uh, backing up fully uh, the investments in renewables. Uh, uh, if we uh, achieve our target together with uh, planned decommissioning and divestment of lignite units, uh, this will lead to a drastic reduction of our CO2 emissions uh, we will be emitting 60% um, uh, less of CO2 uh, in, uh, in five years from now. 
carbon intensity of our generation will also uh, reduce significantly. It will be uh, less than 70% of uh, current levels. And last but not least, uh, adding this renewables capacity will not only generate uh, sustainable and uh, stable cash flow for us, but it will also allow us, allow us to hedge against uh, carbon, price, uh, carbon emission price uh, volatility. So it's, it's very important for us. Thank you. On the end of the panel is Amos Hochstein, Senior Vice President for Marketing at Tellurian. Um, although you have extensive experience also within Europe in uh, energy markets, uh, strategic energy markets, when you worked for the uh, as US Special en Envoy for International Energy Affairs uh, prior to uh, joining Tellurian. Um, We've seen, in relation to gas, we've seen, we, and we've talked a little about the uh, increased gas storage capacity in Revithusa, the new gas coming in through the uh, gas trade, RFS, FRSU, uh, in a few years' time, and the TAP. How is this going to affect prices and availability in Greece and, and, and the dependence of the market on, on gas? Well, first, thank you for having me here today. It's a pleasure to be back. Um, the one lesson I've learned in this industry uh, over the last 20 years is never tell anybody any, anything about what you think the price will be uh, of oil and gas in the future. But I think what the important piece to look at, and uh, as you said, I was the special envoy for, for a different president, for President Obama in a different era. Um, we spent a lot of time in Greece and in this region because we thought that energy served a strategic interest in the region uh, for that could promote uh, better political relationships, more stability uh, in, in the region writ large. Uh, it was also at a time when Greece was going through its own transformations uh, economically, and we thought that connecting the energy issue to bring about more investment, reduce costs, privatize some, some of the state institutions, and promote not only the links and interconnections with neighbors such as as Israel, where Matthios is, uh, and, and Egypt and Cyprus, but also with its neighbors to, uh, to the north in Bulgaria uh, and to the west uh, and, and so on, when we talk about Italy and, and so on. We had multiple projects now coming to a critical point with TAP uh, hopefully uh, continuing to progress uh, all the way through, which will bring uh, Azeri uh, gas into Europe, uh, into Greece, but into Europe via Greece. Uh, you will have an FSRU, hopefully in Alexandropoulos, uh, that will allow for global LNG uh, and potentially regional LNG to come in if it, one is developed. Um, and you can have now additional, which adds on to the Revitusa uh, capacity and the increased storage. So, and then hopefully there's a lot of success in the offshore in Greece. So what Greece has the opportunity here is to look at itself, not, I don't know if you want to, people love the word hub, uh, as you said before, uh, but I think it allows for different sources of gas to come into Greece uh, and spread from Greece into the rest of the region. That is a valuable position for Greece to be in. There are a couple of notes of caution. The first is to really focus on not, there was a period in time where the political levels were deeply engaged and that was necessary to move these projects forward. But it's important to always look at the other side, the end of it. And that is in order to build and finance these kind of projects, we also need a consumer base, we need a customer base, we need companies that will actually sign uh, purchase agreements for this gas to be able to appropriately finance these projects so that they can stand the test of time and not just uh, be political projects. The political impetus is important, but the commerciality of it is just as important. And I would say that's, that's true with the LNG facilities uh, that are supposed to interconnect with the IGB, uh, which has been a bit troubled over the last 10 years of trying to get off the ground. I've spent much, many, many, many hours and frustrating hours on trying to see how do you bring that coalition together and bring the commercial perspective into it. Uh, the second is the Project Du Jour, which is a pipeline, an East Med pipeline, or uh, I think some refer to it as a peace pipeline. Uh, I get, I, I get um, 
I get very nervous when anything is a piece something uh, that costs upwards of $10 billion. Uh, that's a big price tag, uh, and I think piece is a heavy word uh, for that. And I think what happens is when you do these, when you start talking about these projects, and I think Matthias talked about maps and signatures on maps and drawing lines, these are this is a very expensive pipeline, uh, an extremely expensive pipeline, uh, a complex one, uh, that doesn't necessarily have the commercial uh, backbone to it, uh, either on the supply side or the demand side, and definitely not on the financing side. And I think the danger here is not just, okay, what does it make a difference, a few photo ops. I think the danger becomes, does it become a distraction from other projects that are more, uh, that are more real uh, from the private sector perspective? So I think there's a great, I think there's a tremendous opportunity in the region, in Greece in particular, uh, to be able to become a leader in this, uh, skipping the word hub, but a leader in this, in this sector that will support investment, will bring down prices. Uh, and I think lastly, just to connect it to Alexandra's points before, as we see a move to a, uh, a lower emissions world that, especially in Greece, we're, as an EU member and having to live up to those commitments, I think you're seeing a continued delinking of oil and gas uh, in not only in pricing but in investment. Uh, and that gas is getting closer to becoming linked more with the renewable industry as far as as a base load uh, that will allow for renewables to grow, but that means the gas will continue to grow in Europe as well uh, in a more robust way than we just than we anticipated just a year or two ago. If you look at the projections for LNG into Europe for gas demand, they've been wrong. They were flat and declining in Europe. They now have had a robust couple of years. Spain has significantly increased its LNG imports. Uh, so that's part of gas becoming that fuel that will accompany renewables as we grow into a cleaner future. Thank you. Um, I'm happy to accept questions from the floor from now, but you've been quite a quiet audience so far. I don't know if there's any <laughs> questions. Can, can, yeah, we, we can't hear you, I'm afraid. Well, nobody at the back can hear you. So. Take him to the microphone. Yeah, since I get involved in this field uh, and I'm interested, particularly in DESTA, how come this project has moved forward? The market connecting it to the European Union distribution is there, and the responses from the bidders apparently were not so significant. And Sorry, uh, DESTA it was yes. the gas. Which, which project are you talking about? So DESTA. All right. The gas distribution bid, you know, coming out of uh, your own company, I think, uh, Alexander, was it not? Is DESTA one of your no, yeah. affiliates? Uh, well, yeah. Can you tell us something about what is happening on that particular contract? Because well, I hear. Gas. Well, DESTA, about the DESPA. private. Um, do, do, you, do you want to talk about the privatization of Yeah, I can, I can say a few words. Uh, DESFA uh, is actually a very successful privatization, which will close uh, just before Christmas. So yep. it's a nice Christmas present, I suppose. Uh, we, uh, as Hellenic Petroleum, in cooperation with the privatization fund, uh, we run a tender. We had two very competitive offers, and the winning consortium was a consortium uh, comprised of three top-tier European TSOs, uh, Fluxis, uh, Enagas, and SNAM, the leader of the consortium. So we believe it's a great outcome uh, for DESFA, and a great company such as DESFA can become even stronger with the support of, uh, of these, uh, these three shareholders. So uh, as far as Hellenic Petroleum is concerned, we consider it a success. And I believe also the government, I don't want to speak for the government, but from what I know from the privatization fund, they also consider it a success. Yes. Uh, we, I'm sorry, we, we just can't hear you. I think you'll have to move that discussion until a bit later on. Can I, can I ask you, Arno? Mm -hmm. um, we, we've heard it already today that uh, 
most whilst projects are being funded within Greece, and I mean the Despa uh, acquirers, Senfluga, are being funded by the National Bank of Greece um, for, for, this, uh, for the acquisition price. Uh, when are the international banks going to come? Uh, and of course, there's been a lot of funding for renewable energy, particularly from EBRD, EIB, and IFC. But when are the international banks going to come back, and, and what, what do they need to see before they do? Yeah, um, yeah. I heard what uh, Mathias said about 2015 and uh, the lack of financing, and uh, it's true it was a major issue. Uh, it's still a question mark today, but I think the situation is improving. I mean, when we, I mean, international banks are more comfortable today with the credit risk of Greece than they were before, and the improvement of credit rating and so on is uh, is helping. They know energy sector, they know um, the counterparties and the, you know, and, and the projects. Um, what has happened in recently is that uh, the Greek banks were able to underprice, let's say, be more aggressive than international banks because they they, um, they were much more comfortable with uh, with Greece and with the counterparties as they know better. Um, but we expect that there will be an increased demand. I mean, it will go in parallel with the investment of foreign um, investors in Greece. I mean, the more you see deals like this far with European uh, investors, you know, coming in the country, it will help also to to Bring, to bring more financing and to provide more comfort to, to banks. Um, now looking at renewables, um, there is probably one additional issue for international banks, which is uh, the size of the deals. I mean, the tickets uh, for some projects is probably a bit small. I mean, it remains a, a number of uh, smaller projects, which is not, doesn't make so easy for international banks to, to come. I mean, they have a kind of minimal, uh, minimum ticket. And that yeah. could be one issue on top of what you already mentioned before. But we see improvement. Definitively, we see the situation better today um, in the current environment. Yeah. It's Paribas funded the very first wind project in Greece in 1999. So we're yeah, waiting okay. to see you come another, back. Another world. <laughs> <laughs> um, can I, but can I, I think, add something on yeah. the for financing. Uh, size, yes, is, is important for large international banks to, to come in, but uh, this is also important for European Investment Bank, for example. Uh, we are working with European Investment Bank. They are financing uh, about 100 megawatts of renewables projects that uh, are mature and we are developing. So European Investment Bank is looking at it as a portfolio instead of as a yep. Uh, one by one uh, projects. So this could be an approach also for the international banks for renewables. Yes, yes I think that's what, what we're going to see going forward is uh, a lot of large projects being brought together into, into, into larger groups. Um, can I ask actually George again um, about the more downstream, the supply of electricity and gas um, on, a, on a retail basis. I know that uh, you're involved in uh, El Pedison, which is involved, and, and, and the move away, the uh, reduction of the PPC monopoly on, on energy supply and, and how that's going. What's your... Well, I, I think that the uh, upcoming adoption of the European target model is a very important step uh, towards the uh, full liberalization of, uh, of the market. It's, it's something that all the market players are expecting. We understand it's going to take place sometime next year. Uh, the current position is it's going to be early next year. I suspect it's going to be later in the year, but uh, it's, uh, it's, it's coming. We believe that El Pedison is very well placed to compete in this new uh, environment. We have uh, flexible uh, gas-fired uh, plants. Uh, we actually expect these plants to become even more competitive as alternative gas supply sources are brought into Greece, hopefully through the projects we discussed uh, in this uh, panel. So the combination of flexible plants, uh, growing uh, position in the Greek market, of course, we still have a, a long way to go, but that's how those uh, market liberalization exercises uh, play out. So we look forward to uh, competing in Greece and also very soon in the markets which will be coupled with uh, Greece in the context of the target model. Uh, so 
uh, we you know we look we look to the future with optimism in this in this important part of our portfolio in this new activity for us thank you any more questions I've got 16 seconds you're going st to yeah, standing between you and your lunch so uh, it just uh, leaves then to thank my excellent panel very interesting as always i've got loads more questions to ask but i shall have to uh, catch you at lunch or this afternoon thank you everybody i think thank you.